Hi there. Welcome to my videos on elementary differential equations. This is video number 11 for chapter 8 and the topic is Fourier series and eigenvalue problems. Let's get started. In the previous video, we already introduced eigenvalue problem and we took one example. So here we will take our second example. The problem is the following. We want to consider the boundary value um, equation, that is the same equation here, and the boundary values are given at x equals 0 and L, but now they are given as the derivative is 0 at both points. So note that here is the derivative that are given at the boundary, not at the function value. And furthermore, um, the values are always zero, so it will be homogeneous boundary conditions. We will see that with this change, we will find very different eigenvalues and eigenfunctions. Okay, so we'll still need to discuss the three cases for the different signs of lambda, lambda less than zero, lambda equal zero, and lambda bigger than zero. So let's go into that. Case one, lambda negative, then we can write it as negative k square, as we did before. Then the um, solution is exponential functions. So we'll have e k to the kx, e to the negative kx, and then multiply by c1 and c2, and add them up. Okay, And now we need to um, verify the boundary condition, which involves the derivative. So let's differentiate this. You differentiate this, you get a k in the front. And then you differentiate this, you get a negative k in the front. OK, so let's put the boundary condition. So y prime at 0, and then you will have these two will be 1. So you get kc1 minus kc2 which shall be zero according to the condition. And then if you evaluate the derivative at L, then you have to change the X into L here, and that shall be zero. And you can easily um, solve this and find that um, C1 shall equal to C2. This is um, an easy computation because you can see that from the first equation, C1 must equal to C2. And then you can just change the C2 into C1, and then you see k times C1 and is a common factor, and then you will have this constant, e to the kl minus e to the negative kl, which is not zero. Okay, and therefore um, k is not zero, therefore the C1 must be zero, and C2 must be zero also. So in this case, um, we only get the trivial solution that is identically zero for the solution, so we discard it. So this step is the same as the first example we had. Okay, let's consider the second um, case where lambda equals zero. Then um, the equation simply becomes y double derivative equals zero. So the function shall be a linear function. We can write it as ax plus b. And then um, the derivative y prime would be just a, so it will be the slope of the function. And then we put in the boundary condition y prime at 0 shall be 0, then a is 0, and y prime at l is 0, so a is 0. So if a is 0, this would satisfy the two boundary conditions. And then we see that b now remains arbitrary. There's nothing, no restriction on the b. So we can simply set it to be 1, because any multiply, multiply, and can't scalar multiple of the function is another function. It's a linear homogeneous equation. So we found one eigenpair where the eigenvalue is 0, and the eigenfunction is the constant function 1. Okay. So note that this result is very different from the first example, where for the first example, when lambda is zero, we only get a trivial solution, which we discard. Okay, case number three is where lambda is positive. So let's write it to be k square, 
as we've done before. And then the solution is sine cosine, a linear combination of them. And then we can also prepare the derivatives so we can check the boundary conditions. So if you differentiate cosine, you get negative sine and you have a k. And differentiate sine, you get cosine. Also remember to keep the k outside here. Okay, let's check the boundary conditions. So the first one is y prime equals zero. So when x is zero, sine is zero, cosine is one, we just get k c2. And k is not zero, therefore c2 is zero. Now let's check the um, derivative at l equals zero. So since c2 is zero, we're gonna discard that term. We only focus on that term. So we get negative k c1 sine um, KL, and this must equal to zero to have that condition satisfied. So here we have three terms, K, C1, and the sine term. K is not zero. So this condition basically give us two possibilities. The one is C1 is zero, which we listed here, and the second is this sine KL is zero. Let's consider the first one where C1 is zero. Then we see that C1 is zero and C2 is zero. We get trivial solution, which we are not interested in. And then we um, have only um, the case two and uh, where C1 is not zero. So we can let C1 to be one. As we have done many times, we just put the constant to be one. And then we must have the sine Kx kl shall be zero and then we see that um, sine is zero when this kl here is n pi for n integer okay and then this gives an expression of k which is n pi over l and that holds for n equals to one to three and so on so we see that for each of the k value we'll get an um an eigenvalue and a corresponding eigenfunctions. So let's put n as index. So we have the lambda n. Lambda is just k square. k is this one. So it's this one square. And the eigenfunction um, is, uh, remember, it's the cosine function. Uh, we put c1 to be 1. So it's just cosine um, the kx, so m pi over lx, okay, for n from 1 to 3. So note that now we have different eigenfunctions. In the first example, we get sine, but this one, we get cosine. Okay, so we can combine the results in the case two and three, and we can include the case where um, it, um, the constant is a solution by noting that if n shall be zero, cosine of zero is just one. So we can say, this will be all the eigenvalue and eigenfunctions, and we let n go from 0, 1, 2, where the 0 is the one we get in case 2, where um, lambda equals 0. Okay, so I um, would like also to call your attention to all these eigenfunctions. These eigenfunctions will be when n is 0, it's 1, and when n is 1, 2, 3, it's this bunch of cosine function, which all of them are part of the trig set that we used in Fourier series. Okay, so let's make some observations and discussions. So first, we note that um, boundary conditions are important and the type of boundary conditions. Different ones will give us very different eigenvalues and eigenfunctions. And in these two examples we have had, the eigenfunctions are sine and cosine functions in the same form as the trick set that we used in Fourier series. So let's recall what we learned in Fourier series about the set of functions that we used. We know that these functions are called mutually orthogonal. That means um, two different functions in the set are orthogonal to each other, and uh, the inner product will be zero for them. Okay. So using that, you can say that now for each of these two eigenvalue problems, then the set of eigenfunctions are also mutually orthogonal. 
So um, we would like to comment that, in fact, um, this is a, actually a more general property for eigenfunctions. Okay. One can define proper inner product such that eigenfunctions for the same eigenvalue problems would always form a mutual orthogonal set for certain type of eigenvalue problems. Okay, so um, let's flash back and recall the similar concept of eigenvalue and eigenvectors for matrices. And uh, if the underlying matrix is symmetric, then we know that all the eigenvectors, are, they also are orthogonal to each other. So all the eigenvectors would form an orthogonal basis. Okay, so there's definitely a lot of similarity. And that's why these are called by the same name, eigenvalues. Okay, so um, that is all for this video. We'll end here. In the next video, we'll look at more examples and somewhat more complicated boundary condition types. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this one and I'll see you next time.